Hi guys, and welcome to the Stephen King Cemetery Club. Hi guys, Strawberry Spring is the next short story in Night Shift, and this one is very true crime-esque. It's um kind of like a traditional Jack the Ripper type story. The subject matter reminds me very much of the Ypsilanti murders that happened in Michigan in the late 60s. Um, there's a book called The Michigan Murders by Edward Keyes, K-E-Y-E-S, and I strongly recommend reading that if you're into true crime. It is fascinating, horrifying, it's engaging throughout, it's just, you can't put it down. Like, some true crime can be a bit of a slog because it's just so, so detail-oriented, so many different names introduced, it's very hard to keep track of, all the technical stuff and whatnot, but this book was so good and I think I'm actually going to end up buying it because it was so addicting. So Strawberry Spring is about a serial killer named spring -Heel Jack. He has been stalking the new Sharon Teachers College, and there's this whole phenomenon of Strawberry Spring, which is kind of like an Indian summer. It happens every eight to ten years. The old timers talk about it, and what happens is you get a thaw in the middle of winter, and then you're hit really hard with, you know, even more winter, so huge storms will come in after that to you know, get rid of your early spring hopes and dash them. So this is March 1968 and there's melting snow and fog and our main character, we don't know his name, but he is enjoying the seductiveness of the fog and he loves the smell and he loves the fog enveloping him and he takes walks and he talks about having a headache and having to you know, walk to clear his mind. He's been studying a lot. He keeps mentioning that he is, you know, going to class. He's studying this and that. He talks about a, quote, silent, muffled world of white drifting fog on page 172. So a girl is found with her throat slit and she is the first victim. Panic ensues. The cops are called in. No one knows who the killer is. It was done under the cover of fog and you know it's very scary. People are on high alert, they're walking around campus kind of paranoid. They do think that they catch the murderer and then when the guy is in custody it happens again and this time the girl has been found decapitated and her head is not anywhere to be seen. So our main character, this is when he's walking around clearing his head, quote, for me, that was one of the most beautiful nights I can remember. Page 174. So the first victim, Gail Kerman, was an art major. Second girl, Anne Bray, she was found with soggy ground around her and no footprints. Not her footprints, not the killer's footprints, nothing. Nothing is around her. So that's how the serial killer gets the nickname Spring Hill Jack, because he didn't leave any, any footprints. So the roommate to our main character is talking about how this false spring, this strawberry spring, indicates that there is a bigger storm to come. The longer the strawberry spring, the harder the storm will be. And I take that to be kind of a metaphor for Spring Hill Jack. It's something that builds up and builds up and builds up, and then the ferocity of the storm comes. Then we have police patrolling campus even more, and Adele Parkins was killed that night. And then there's one final victim, Marsha Curran, and she was killed on the 23rd of March. The first murder was the 16th of March, and Marsha Curran, our main character, is wondering why she would go alone to campus, why she would dare walk around after all that's been happening. Quote, maybe a need for one desperate and passionate romance with the warm night, the warm fog, the smell of the sea, and the cold knife. Page 178. So, if you aren't already suspicious, 
that kind of makes you wonder what is this main character's fascination with the fog, with the romantic aspect that he seems to have with the dark night and possibly murder. So everyone, so they take an early spring break, everyone leaves campus because everyone is very terrified of, you know, being the next victim. And then Spring Hill Jack is gone. It says, quote, Spring Hill Jack left with the fog, page 179. So now our main character is talking, I think, eight or ten years into the future. And he reads that Strawberry Spring is back. And he, you know, basically says that he could feel it. He knew it was here. And it basically seduces him. And quote, this morning's paper says a girl was killed on the new Sharon campus near the Civil War cannons. She was killed last night and found in a melting snowbank. She was not, she was not all there. Page 179. So where was our main character last night? His wife wants to know and he can't tell her. He has no idea. All he can remember is driving in this fog. And she is concerned that he is cheating on her. And our main character is trying to recall what happened and he can't remember. And then he starts having feelings of unease about his trunk and he doesn't know why he should be concerned about opening his trunk, why it freaks him out. And we kind of start piecing together, if we haven't already, why he's afraid of opening his trunk. And it says, quote, so he's talking about his wife thinking that, you know, he, he's cheating on her. Quote, she thinks I was with another woman last night. And oh dear God, I think so too. Page 180. I love that ending. It's so brilliant. I love that we are pretty sure he's the killer. He might not be, but it, it's very likely he's the killer. And it's just really, really good. But yes, the, something about this, and maybe Stephen King had been reading the papers, I don't know, but the whole John Norman Collins case, the Ypsilanti Ripper from the late 60s, it's, it's very, very reminiscent. Great story, very typical serial killer. I like that we don't know if the main character knows whether he's the killer. We don't even know if he's the killer, but we suspect he is. And if he is the killer, does he know that he is? Or does he black out? Does he not honestly know anything? But we know something has to be in that trunk. There's gotta be something in that trunk. And then I don't know, it's probably because this is set in the 1960s on a college campus, but it very much makes me think of Hearts in Atlantis. And there are probably tie-ins that I don't remember, but when we get to Hearts in Atlantis, I'll try and remember to keep Strawberry Spring in mind. So next week is The Ledge. Have some sweet day. Could actually make a good movie. I do like when Stephen King branches off into kind of true crime territory.